can say I'm still not 100% sure what happened. I think, sem as you said, semi-finals are even harder races than finals. But uh, I've been in the sport at the top for the last seven, eight years, and there is a saying that is always used, that short track, but unfortunately, in this occasion, it's not short track, it's top sport. Well, you said at the beginning of the Olympic Games that this is where it was all at. I mean, that presumably, your thoughts on that haven't changed. Definitely not. I think it's, it's for me, it's obviously disappointing to, to have finished fifth, knowing I was good enough to win. I prepared mentally as well as I possibly could, as well as I needed to. I think the fact that Fred Blackburn finished second in the final and I beat him in my quarterfinal, you know, would suggest that I know I'm good enough to win. But again, that's top sport. And I think you have to be able to put that behind me now, look forward to the weekend and the relay. Do you think there's a situation now that short track speed skating is in the Olympic Games, it's here to stay because it's a very popular sport, that the skaters are getting better and better and the standard is tougher? The standard's improving all the time. The ice conditions here are marvellous. I mean, world records are getting broken right, left and centre. I think what needs to happen back in Britain for, for the sport to grow at the same rate that it's growing everywhere else is that ice shrink managers and the whole infrastructure of the way ice shrinks work has to change. Just thinking back to that semi-final, is there any, th any one thing that you can think of that you would do different now? Not at all. I was, I was lying in second place with about four laps to go, I think, when, when I actually fell. And for me, that is, a, that is a, a very, very comfortable position to be in. In fact, I was, <clears throat> I, I was worried that Michel Daigneault, the, the Canadian in front, wasn't going quick enough because the, the New Zealand, Chris, uh, Mike McMillan was coming on the outside. And I went, all the time I was hoping Mike would accelerate that little bit quicker. And it was, I think what actually happened was my arm swung back and his arm was swinging forward on the outside, which, and we, we sort of both knocked each other's arm and I swung around. And I, I mean, Archie and Dave <clears throat> put protests in, etc. but you know, that, that, that's part of the game. You're all moving around the track at an incredible speed. Is your awareness, as it should be, or with a stadium full of 7,000 people, do you get distracted at all? Not at all. I, I was there and, you know, I could have been in that stadium on my own because I knew exactly what I was doing. It was the same as the, the so-called B final. I said to Archie before I went on, I said I wasn't that keen on, on, on doing it, obviously, because I, I didn't do what I'd come to do or come to get, as it were. But I still went out there and, and, and proved that I'm one of the best skaters in the world. And looking forward to Lily Hammer in 1994. Well, what were you thinking when you watched the final? <laughs> what was I thinking? I think that, that is a very difficult question, Paul. And, and at the moment, anyway, I don't really feel like... I, I, if I was to be honest, I mean, I know that I should have been there and I know that I should have been getting on the podium in a while and picking up gold. Wilf taking his disappointment well. Now, I've seen some sports in my time that take a bit of describing where the rules can be obscure, croquet, real tennis, but with short track relay racing, well, it takes some getting used to. The women's final. Away they go. And it's Canada with a good start. That's Perro, their lead skater, number 20. Chasing hard is a loss of the Soviet Union. So Canada now lead. Americans in second place. Canada one, America two. Lambert now for Canada. America in second place. Third, the unified team, and fourth, Japan, the new world record holders. And the Canadians really setting a tremendous pace. Natalie Lambert is the lead Canadian. Hands on now for number six, who's Sylvie Daigle, the world record holder at 500 metres. The Americans in second place, who's Ziegelmeyer. And Japan a long, long way behind. And the unified team has caught up quite a lot. So we've really got three teams in it with Jack Pan, who uh, set the new world record nearly half a lap behind. Canada in front, America second. Unified team is third. Nearly a bump at the changeover. 
They change over at different points. It's a put round for Canada in front, but being attacked very hard by Amy Peterson, America. Still Canada leading. That's Lambert. The chasing American is Donal, and the unified team very much back in touch now. Canada lead, America second, unified team third. Change over for Canada there. The American team will change here. They lost a bit on the change. 54 for America in second place is Kathy Turner. And Japan a long, long way behind. In fact, in danger of being lapped. And this surely must be world record pace. Canadians coming through with 15 laps to go. Number nine is Perro. Handing on to number five, Akutro. And the unified team's lost some ground. American Donal now chasing the Canadian in front. The Canadian's on the change. And the Americans will change here. Lambert in front, being chased hard by Ziegelmeyer. America won. American number one, though, has lost a bit of ground. And it's now Canada, two, three, four, five meters in front. United States in second place, unified team third. And Japan getting closer and closer to being lapped. A tremendous standard in this event. Perro now, they opened up a gap for Canada. The Canadian on the ice is Sylvie Daigle. Being chased hard by Donnell of the United States. The unified team are catching the Americans and Canada going further away. Natalie Lambert now is their lead skater. And the unified team closing on the United States all the time. 54 for America is Kathy Turner. The unified team will change here. They're closing on the Americans. Anna Belova is their skater. But she's lost some ground, bumped by somebody who just finished uh, her leg. And the unified team have dropped back. Still Canada in front. United States second. The unified team now some 30 metres, 20 to 30 metres behind the Americans, having been about two or three metres behind. In the closing stages now, and Canada look good for gold. If they can stay upright, less than three laps to go. It's Lambert, the Canadian, who is in front, taking over Sylvie Daigle. And when she comes round this time, she'll hear the bell. There's the bell. The new world record for 37.08. That's not going to go by the look of it. Could be close, though. And Canada come home in front, and they have broken the world record. America in second place. 4.36.7.0. She's just done it, in spite of starting celebrating very early indeed. The Canadians, world champions for the past three years, show their favoritism was completely justified. They've taken the gold. United States in second place. And in third place, the unified team, Japan 4. And the world record broken yet again. Canada celebrate gold and a new world record. Canada pushing each other to the gold medal. Now, away from skating for the moment, let's now bring you the story of the last event in the women's alpine skiing, the slalom up there. This is their semi-final with David Coleman. The second semi-final of the men's 5,000 meter relay Canada drawn on the inside. A very strong team indeed. Japan in lane two, Great Britain, Matt Jasper in lane three, and on the outside in lane four, Italy. Tough semi final. The Canadians must be favourites here. They had three men in the last eight of the thousand Ready. metres. Right away, Canada in front, Italy coming up on the outside. Canada lead, Italy second, Great Britain third, Japan four. That's the order, the changeover coming up. You can change as much as they like. 
on when they like, and Great Britain slipped back to fourth place there on the change. Some changing at one and a half laps, some every lap. Canada in front, Italy second, Japan third, Great Britain in fourth place. So Nicky Gooch for Great Britain, handing on to Wilco Riley now. The Canadians, number 11, Freddie Brackman, who got the silver medal in the uh, 1,000 metres, Italy in second place. Number 29 for Great Britain, third, is Matt Jasper. Still Blackman leading for Canada. Italy second. Now in third place for Great Britain is Horspool, the veteran of the team. Not much between them, though. Canada leading, Italy second, Great Britain third. Now going for Great Britain is Nicky Gooch, the youngster. And in fourth place, Japan. And uh, Britain and Japan losing a lot of valuable ground. O'Reilly goes now for Great Britain. He's got to make up a lot of space. And he's doing just that.